find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. I'm hungry, spark, but I ain't starving yet. Jane for the pain, cocktail, dollar set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Pizza for the taste of the pizza. Hey everybody, welcome to the Indie Mayhem Show, the show where we talk to the independents and independent pro wrestling. Uh, I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters, uh, doing some video production up here with some uh, promotions, the uh, International Wrestling Cartel, Renegade Wrestling Alliance in the greater Pittsburgh area, as well as some great documentaries, uh, past and future. Got a few hits this week. I'm excited for the future of our stuff, uh, stuff around here at Sorgatron Media. But also with me, he is the voice of Aspire Pro Wrestling. He is the the man. He is the indie wrestling dictionary. When you want to find out who that rose bit, bud is on Monday Night Raw, he is Eamon Payton at Eamon 2 please on the Twitter. Yes, I am. Thank you, Sorg. Uh, uh, once again, uh, happy to, to be your indie wrestling dictionary. Uh, uh, nine times out of ten, if there's somebody appearing on a WWE television show who sort of doesn't know who it is, he immediately messaged me to ask if I know. And sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But hey, uh, I'm, I'm glad to have that honor and distinction. <laughs> if he doesn't know who they are, they're not worth knowing. But this is your Indie Mayhem show where we'll help to get you uh, to get to know some people on the indie wrestling scene or the uh, the the roundabout independent professionally uh, working people, uh, and so you can check us out wrestlingmayhemshow.com for this and other shows that we're doing. Uh, talking about all aspects aspects of pro wrestling, uh, video, audio, great articles over there by our friend Matt Car- Carlin's, our friend in the mainstream, having some uh, really good hits about. Uh, what's going on there? And of course, his column, IndieWrestling.us, over on the blog over there. We'll talk about that a little later in the show. Uh, but please subscribe to the Indie Mayhem Show. We're on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Spreaker, uh, YouTube, uh, and even check out some of our videos over on uh, Daily Motion and Facebook as well. Uh, and you guys can uh, drop a line to us. We're uh, we got a phone number four one two two zero six WMS zero is the hotline. Drop a voicemail. Let you know. Let us know what you really think. Use your words or drop us a line to Good Times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. If you have questions for our guest, if we've announced it for the week, or uh, if you have any suggestions of uh, independent professional wrestling we should check out and talk about on the show, or if you have guests you think we should have on the show, uh, we actually are pursuing a couple of people that, um, that, that that have been suggested to us, and we hope to get them on the show very, very soon. We listen to you guys, and if you dig this, you can support us, uh, uh, one, by checking out our, our friend Slice on Broadway, I have SliceOnBroadway.com if you're in the Pittsburgh area. Um, I know maybe our guests are in another area. That's okay. But maybe if you guys get a booking up here in Pittsburgh, please visit our friends and let them know you heard about them on the Indie Mayhem Show. Uh, and, uh, and of course, IndieWrestling.us, as I mentioned before. And, of course, there's a Patreon, patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show, if you want to support us that way. Amen! Who do we got this week? I promise I won't turn this into the singing episode that I almost just did. That, that would be bad for everyone involved. Um, but uh, yeah, we uh, have a very special guest this. We have a very special guest this week. Uh, uh, definitely somebody who I want to have on for a good while. Uh, uh, recent addition to the Inspire Pro roster, who I've gotten to work with uh, for the, uh, most of this year, uh, but uh, has been making his way up uh, around Texas and a lot of the uh, Southern wrestling area. Uh, and it's a pleasure to have him on, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome to the Indie Mayhem Show one half of the Pulp Patrol, Kurt Matthews. Kurt, how are you this evening? Man, I am pumped to be here on Indie Mayhem. Hey, man, how are you doing tonight? Hello? I'm doing fantastic. Like I said, uh, uh, very, very glad to have you on this week. I, I think we may have a delay um, issue. Uh, hopefully... Hopefully we'll be okay uh, 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 for now. But uh, I guess the um, the best way we can sort of start off uh, this uh, uh, episode of the Indie Mayhem Show is the question we kind of like to start off with every week, uh, finding out how people sort of got into pro wrestling. Uh, so uh, the question I have is, what is your first ever memory of watching professional wrestling? My first ever memory of professional wrestling is probably when my dad took me to the stadium in Jackson, Mississippi for WCW where I got to see Sting and Conan wrestle Buff Bagwell and one other guy that I don't really remember but the main thing I remember from it is me and my older brother got the NWO red and black and we didn't like my little brother who was like a newborn so we got a black and white version for him 
<laughs> nice. Uh, uh, so it was safe to say you kind of a, a WCW uh, uh, kid growing up, uh, getting into wrestling. What's that now? Say, say one more time. Uh, you were kind of, sorry about that. Uh, you were kind of a WCW kind of kid growing up into wrestling. Oh, uh, we were me and my older brother were like all WCW growing up. We were not allowed to watch WWF because. My mom was not comfortable with Degeneration X doing the suck it sign. And whenever we did that, we got grounded. So we were not allowed to watch that one. We were, we were stuck with Sting and Ultimate Warrior and Hollywood Hogan. Awesome. But no, definitely. Uh, uh, obviously a great period to get into wrestling. Um, what was, the, uh, when did you sort of, sort of have the idea that you wanted to become a pro wrestler and, and, uh, when did that sort of get into your mind that you wanted to do this for a living? Um, probably whenever I was trying to figure out what I was going to do once I graduated high school and went off to college, whenever all the questions of like, what are you going to do when you grow up? What, what are you going to study in college? Like, all of my friends were like, oh, I'm going to be a doctor. I'm going to be a nurse. And uh, I don't know. I was watching Monday Night Raw one night and I was like, I'm, I'm going to do this one day. Uh, so awesome. that's what I told everyone, and um, I think I might be the only one out of my friends that like stuck to what they said they were going to do when we were in tenth grade, and told everyone what we were going to do. Very cool. And 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 did you get your start in uh, in the Mississippi area? Uh, I know you've been. I did a little bit of research on that. I know you've been doing this for about three or four years or so. From from what I from what I've seen online. Um, I, I okay. Yeah, I did get my start in Mississippi, but I try to like not tell people that because <laughs> I was not very proud of. Yeah, 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 I was not very proud of what I was doing while I was in Mississippi. Like, I was having fun. I had a bunch of friends out there, but at the same time, in the back of my mind, I was like, I'm never like gonna move anywhere. I'm not. I'm not gonna progress in this career if I stay here in Mississippi. And like, so luckily me and one or two other guys from Mississippi decided that we were going to do TNA gut check one day, that whole, that whole gimmick. <laughs> and l luckily I met Luke Hawks there in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And he helped me get started here at Wildcat and he trained me and everything has been awesome since then. Very cool. Uh, and I hear a lot of really great things about Wildcat and, and Luke Hawks. Um, uh, what's it sort of like, uh, working for him, uh, in particular for Wildcat and, and just sort of, uh, work, working along the people that are, uh, from that promotion. I mean, it's awesome. It's, it's not like working for any other promotion out there in my, in my opinion. Um, I mean, I love working for Inspire Pro. I love working for reality, reality of wrestling. Um, I love working main event, but Wildcat, like all the guys here and all the guys that train here and even the guys that come in from Texas or wherever they're from, we're like a family here. It's not, I mean, it's still a business. It's all business when you really get down to the core of it. But at the same time, everyone here is, is like brothers and sisters here. And so, and like Luke Hawks is like the big daddy of all of it. Awesome. <laughs> if, 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 that make, if that makes sense. Like Luke Hawks, Ever since he brought me in from after he met me at to the TNA gut check, um, he's just been like an older brother or like almost a wrestling dad. He's really helps me out. He's helped me find jobs ever since I moved here from Mississippi to progress in professional wrestling here at Wildcat. Um, I mean, it's, it's just insane what he's done for me since moving here. So like, I can never say enough good things about uh, Wildcat Sports and all the guys here. Awesome. Definitely. Uh, uh, Luke, Luke Hawk aside, is there any other people sort of in your time there that have, like maybe folks that you've wrestled or, or been in the ring with that kind of stick out to you as, as people that, that has really helped you or grown you along the way? Uh, he, he's mostly with a lot of guys that have really helped me along the way. Like um, he's, I've wrestled twice with Steve Anthony and Steve Anthony, you know, he's like doing some stuff with new Japan right now. He's big in the NWA scene right now, but, uh, that's, that's one of the guys that he has put me with that has really 
push me to like really be the best that I can be and helps me like improve like I don't know, like uh I'm trying to think of the right term for it. Just made me pull a uh, real three sixty in the ring, like where I was comfortable doing this. I had to like really push myself to get to where I needed to be to work with him. And since then I've just really pushed myself and strive to get better and better. That's that, that's, awesome. that's the first guy that comes to my mind. Definitely. And, and oh, it, seems, it does seem like that promotion brings in a, a good amount of really phenomenal talent. So, it, and, and also just their production value as well. Like, I feel like it, it, it feels like an environment that gives you as wrestlers kind of a lot of opportunity. All right. I mean, like the production value is amazing here. Like it helps us train to be more TV ready for whenever we're working with other productions that might have TV or are putting out a steady YouTube stream of what their product is. I like, like I said, I can't say enough good things about Wildcat Sports and what they have done for me and how they have helped me since my training started here. Definitely. Uh, going also to sort of like the, like you mentioned, that production kind of side of things. You also mentioned Reality of Wrestling, uh, which is a cheese promotion uh, down in Houston, Texas. Uh, what's it been like working there? And, and obviously, you know, sort of that environment that is, you know, uh, more more like they have like obviously their weekly television show that they have uh uh what is it like sort of working there and and, and working working for booker um it's kind of awesome uh i love working for booker t just because i mean not everyone can say hey i get to see booker t and work for him all the time yeah. uh, um but i mean it it again, their production and their TV, it, it trains me to be ready for if I ever get the opportunity to wrestle in front of like one of the top companies in the world, I'm ready for TV. I know where to look. I know where the main camera is, where if I'm beating this guy up, I know where I'm going to look the best doing it. Um, I mean, the only real downside of working for Booker T right now is I'm not sure if he knows my name. <laughs> um, he me. He's so he with him. So what's your uh, Yeah, <laughs> but no, he he's been so great That's to me. Like it, really, I, he he's been really great to me. He's like helped me so much, like getting behind the cameras and really like showing me what I need to work on and how to improve. Like same with Wildcat Sports, I can't say enough good things about Reality of Wrestling. They've got a really great crew over there. Awesome. Very cool. Um, obviously, also you mentioned the stuff, obviously, you're doing reality wrestling. Also, the, the, how you got into Inspire Wrestling as well was uh, through the tag team that you're in, uh, the Pump Patrol uh, with Jared Wayne. Um, uh, what's it been like kind of working with Jared? And, and, and obviously, you two are very uh, uh, exuberant individuals. With, uh, uh, exuberant. Uh, I, your, I like that uh, word. Yes. <laughs> it's a nice word. Um, yeah. It, uh, but obviously, the characters that you portray and, and what's it been like kind of working with him uh, uh, for the for the time that you've been team? I mean, I mean, like you just said, like the characters we portray, we, the, it's funny because we are not portray, portraying characters at all. That is us. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I was going to ask. That is us amplified and shouting boom a whole lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it, it's been awesome working with Jared. Like, it was funny though because like I've been so like focused on doing singles matches and trying to be a singles wrestler and they put me in a tag team with one or two different guys while I was here at Wildcat. I was like, ah, I don't really want to do tag teams. I kind of want to be a singles wrestler. And then me and Jared have kind of known each other for like, the past, I want to say three to four years. Uh, it was funny. Like me and him have very similar paths and that like we were both fat in high school, but we both like, started going to the gym and lost a ton of weight and uh, we have the same exact past. Like I think the first 
uh, we met over Facebook, which is weird. Um, but I think the first message between he and I was like, did you used to be fat? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, did you? He's like, yeah. And like, no, we like just like shared a bunch of personal horror stories about our high school days and stuff like that. And it's just funny how like we finally actually met somewhere at a show in Mississippi and just stayed in contact since then. And one day he just called me, called me up and was like, Hey dude, uh, AJ Summers, who's, who was his original tag team partner for Pump Patrol, had like, he just quit, I guess. Um, I don't really know the whole story there, but he quit and Jared's like, Hey, I, I need someone for Paw Patrol. And I had already been doing almost the same gimmick that Pump Patrol was about. Uh, I was walking out with resistance bands around my neck. I was doing a bunch of workout <laughs> stuff already. I mean, just being myself because all I do is talk about working out and, you know, stuff like that. So I, when he called me up, I was like, yeah, I can do that. Um, and it's just been so much fun ever since I've done that. It's like working with someone that you relate to and feel like, you know, like a brother is just like, it's crazy how fun it can be. I didn't, never realized tag team wrestling was going to be so much fun. And so I started doing the pump patrol gimmick and, now that's all I want to do whenever I will be at training. I'm here at training tonight at Wildcat Sports right now. And whenever they ask me, hey, you want to do a match tonight? I'm like, uh, if it's a tag match, I'll do it. I, don't, I love tag team wrestling now just because of Pump Patrol. Awesome. That's really cool. I like, and did you ever think, I mean, obviously the transition from being a singles wrestler to a tag wrestler, do you see... I guess the advantages and disadvantages of it. Do you do you notice anything? Like as far as you your work goes, uh, are there things you found very you find very different about working in a tag team? I mean, I guess uh, the main difference I see between singles wrestling and tag team wrestling is just uh, sharing the spotlight. Which when I was uh, when I've tried to do tag teams before is like, I didn't relate with the guy. So it was kind of, it, it felt weird for me doing that. But like with Jerry, like I said, I, I feel like he's my brother. Like I, I like, I love being in that ring working with Jared. So it's like, this is us. This is our thing. This is what we are doing. And I mean, just from doing pump show, people have been booking us all over. So, I mean, I'm definitely getting a lot more work now just because of pump patrol. And I love that. It's awesome. I'm sure it's definitely. Very cool. Uh, definitely. Um, going to now to some of the uh, the regular questions that we have on the Indie Mayhem show. Uh, one that we like to ask no a lot of guests questions. is... Yeah. <laughs> uh, definitely. One of them is, uh, what are you watching currently, uh, either for studying or recreation? Uh, is there any wrestling that you kind of have your eye on right now? Uh, I mean, if I'm studying wrestling, I always like to go back to the classics, like um, WrestleMania 13, uh, Bret Hart versus Stone Cold is one of my favorite matches. Um, I love watching Bret Hart. If, I, if I'm studying fundamentals and just wrestling in general, I love watching Bret Hart versus the British Bulldog, uh, SummerSlam. Wait, um, it, and what year was that? Wrestling history. I want to say... I want to say like early nineties. If I'm early, I'm thinking ninety two. Somewhere around that part. Right? Dude, I was, dude, I was, I was looking for like an exact year, and you just early nineties. <laughs> it, it was ninety two, wasn't it? Wrestling, yeah. wrestling history Sorry. book. Yeah. Your gimmick's done. <laughs> right, it's over. But, uh, anyway, <laughs> Bret Hart versus the British Bulldog at SummerSlam. Uh, Macho Man. Randy Savage versus Ricky Steamboat at WrestleMania 3 is awesome. But uh also love to study different characters and how they portray yeah, portray themselves. Like uh, the model Rick Martel. I love watching the model Rick Martel. He was so into that gimmick and he was awesome. Um, but recreationally, I love to watch NXT I've just started to watch uh, New Japan, and I've I study ROH, just what's popular right now, what everyone, you know, on the internet is watching. I try to keep up to date on that, and 
uh, see whatever what everyone else is liking so that I can try to adjust myself to try to do what they're doing and maybe try to do it better if I can. Yeah. Um, would you say also, you, do you have any for, uh, future goals in mind, either for maybe a year down the line or uh, is there any sort of things that you have in mind as far as the future of your career as places you want to go or anything along those lines? I mean, future goals, if anyone gets into this business and says they don't want to be in WWE, I want to call them a straight-up liar right then and there. <laughs> so someday down the line, I really hope that I can be a contracted wrestler and not just be a rosebud in the background, which, which by the way, did, did you see me when I was a rosebud, Mr. Wrestling History Book? I, I, I must have uh, at least at least once. Yeah, I can't. There's, a, there's so many rose mm-hmm. now. <laughs> that's a likely story. That's a likely right. story. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would love to be a contracted wrestler for WWE. Man, I want to. But my goals really are to be able to make a living doing professional wrestling. And so far, the biggest I've ever done is being able to pay a month's rent through wrestling and pay all my bills to wrestling. So that was a good that was a good one, but I want to do that every month. So that's what I'm kind of trying to get towards. Awesome. Very cool. Uh and sort of the last question we have, kind of the closing one and, and uh many wrestlers that we have on the show take things and take the question in many different directions. So feel free. Uh the question that we have is uh what is in your opinion is the best and worst thing about independent wrestling? I mean, uh, I watched your video earlier with Gregory James, so I kind of had this one in my head already and kind of thought about what I wanted to say already. Which, by the way, I really enjoyed yours with Gregory James, the one where he was on video, and, and uh, you know, I'm not cool enough. But <laughs> whatever. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, well, we'll have to have you on again and, and get, the full, get the full picture. <laughs> oh, part two. The, the sequel. Um, but if I really wanted to answer that question, I put a lot of thought into it. My my answer is always going to be the internet. It is the best and the worst thing about independent professional wrestling. Um, mm-hmm. In one way, more people get to see you, more eyes are on you. You get to promote yourself in front of a whole different audience than you would get to promote yourself in front of if you were just doing shows around Texas. Like, you can have people on your social media that might be from New York or might be from California or wherever that is following you. That just happened to stumble upon you and said, I like that. I like what he's doing. They get to see you and they get to know what you're about and maybe they like what they see and maybe they'll keep following you and you never know where that's going to go. But on the flip side of that coin, if you were not using social media properly, if, you have your Facebook and you're posting all of your drama and all of your day to day bad things that a fan is not going to like, or they don't want to see that that's ruining that. That could potentially be ruining your career. Like look at the NXT wrestlers right now that have all of these things pulled up from their Instagrams from years ago before they even thought even were thinking about being in the, the WWE that are losing their jobs for what they've posted. You know, I mean, it, it's, I mean, at one point I want to say it's common sense that you don't post some things, but at the same time, you never know what somebody can dig up on you that you posted whenever you were 15 years old and weren't even thinking about a future career and be able to use that against you. So the internet, that that is my answer for $500. Amen. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, that that may be honestly one of my favorite answers because I agree with that one hundred percent. We had funny, a lot of discussions here on the Indian And channel, it's funny you funny media you mentioned that because I'm pretty sure don't they sign uh, decency disclosures or something when they get signed to WWE now? Like like that like I have I, I think it's something like I don't have naked pictures of me out there on the internet somewhere or something like. Uh, the, the, uh, I, I, I can't. I can't. I can't answer you one hundred percent on that because I've never seen that contract. I've right, never seen course. that contract one day because hey, 
I can find that. You will not find naked pictures of me on the internet somewhere. <laughs> Everyone listening out there on the internet, you will never see a naked picture of me online. Right, right. But, but, yeah, but, I'm but, sure, I'm but sure it's something you're looking at. Got very <laughs> you've, got, you've got some people online like that might listen to this that are like, uh-uh. But then there's like the main majority of the guys that might listen to this that are like, oh, thank God. Right. <laughs> That's um, always good, though. But no, I, I'm not positive about that. I, w- I would say that probably sounds pretty legit. That sounds like something that probably needs to be signed, but I, I don't know for sure about that. No, of course. Awesome. But definitely, I... But definitely, it's a it's a thing people need to keep in mind uh, uh, when looking into their future careers. So, I, I def- like I said, I definitely oh, agree yeah. with that answer. Oh yeah, this internet. You ne- you never know. You never know. Definitely. Um, well, thank you so much, Kurt, for coming on and, and and talking with us. It was a pleasure to have, have you on. Uh, like I said, we'll have to get we'll have to get that part too, so we can get the full visual Kurt Matthews package. Um, so uh, uh, see, now you, now it now it now it is advertised. There's going to be a sequel. Now we have to do <laughs> somewhere it. It's, down it's, the line. It's, it's legally <laughs> binding. Um, so uh, if anyone wants to check you out on social media, or if you have any upcoming events that you would like to uh, plug, feel free to plug away. All right, you can find me on Facebook. I don't know the actual like link but just type in Kurt Matthews C-U-R-T Matthews you will find me um, then on Instagram and Twitter it is at the Kurt Matthews and you can find me uh, next weekend uh, October 17th I believe uh, at main event in Henderson Texas then you can find me on November 1st for Inspire Pro Wrestling, where Jared Wayne and I, the Pump Patrol, will take the Inspire Pro Tag Team titles. Even though we're in a gauntlet match, which I don't think is very fair, considering Matt Palmer doesn't have to do the gauntlet match. But whatever, that's a different one. That's for the sequel. That'll, um, that'll definitely and then <laughs> November 14th is Wildcats four-year anniversary show which is going to be our biggest show to date so i'm very excited about that one uh just a, bu- a bunch of big stuff coming uh in the next month month or two so that's where you can find me and i mean Home patrol is where it's at absolutely uh definitely so anyone uh who sees kurt matthews or the pump patrol on an upcoming independent wrestling event near you please be sure to check them out and, and go support kurt uh, in all his ventures in pro wrestling. Uh, so like I said, thank you very much, Kurt, for being on the show. And right now we're going to jump into everything that happened this past week in Sorgatron Media. We'll be right back. Are you familiar with Craigslist? I did know an individual by the name of Craigslist, but uh, he did. It's an online classifieds. You know the classifieds from the newspaper? Oh, I sleep on the newspapers all the time. I know just what you're talking about. Is, uh, hey, guys, a happy International Podcast Day. Bye. High five for International who, who Podcast Day. Strained wrist. Who, who, who made it International Podcast Day? Because yesterday was International Coffee Day. Don't and it was like International it. Something Else yeah, Consumable Day, I thought, too. Yeah, didn't Justin Kanaki list a bunch of days and he left out podcasting day, right? Have you force-touched your keyboard? Yes. Force-touching the <laughs> keyboard is the greatest. The you touch your keyboard when you're in a text input field. Ta-da, you have a mouse. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I had the running joke forever. I mean, when I managed Sterling James Keenan as a heel uh, against Claudio Castagnoli a couple times, and one time we did the uh, the Rick Rude Warrior finish in WrestleMania Five. Uh, you know, Corey Graves ever needs help beating Cesaro, he knows where to call. Bobby is missing. If you have any information, please contact Captain Planet. Someone wanted Street Fighter Four to include Floyd Money Mayweather and Ronda Rousey. I, I mean, it looks like a, a Street Fighter version of both characters. And I would play as Ronda Rousey all day. Mm-hmm. Let's say you have a friend who is tired and he's burnt out on wrestling, but he doesn't want to give it up. He doesn't want to stop watching wrestling. He wants to get back in. He wants something to hook him, to grab him by the throat like things used to. He's an old man who just wants to love wrestling again. How would you make that old man love wrestling again? Now, 
Thank you, Eamon. And please check out all that stuff from Sawtooth Willie to touching your phone to sure uh to our talk with uh bert legrand last last week some great talk about some uh, old pittsburgh wrestling some really cool stuff uh check all that stuff out sorgatronmedia.com so let's talk about some indie wrestling uh beyond our interview here of course this weekend i will be attending kicking and screaming uh as in people keep trying to book me for other projects to be quite honest but i'm going to be there wheels i'm going to be there at rwa uh rwa live.com uh I'll, I'll be i'll be out there in west newton pa uh rocking it rolling it and checking out some really good stuff uh we, we talked about this last month that there was the tremendous match between amazing red and sanjay dutt and the uh budding war between the rwa and tna impact wrestling uh right down the road uh another ended indie wrestling promotion that got run out of town as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but anyways, but no, no, I think uh, they got a, ni- a great show coming up here. Uh, uh, Friends of the show involved. One, I'm loving, there's a lot going into it. I, I, you know, you know, there's a lot, a lot of energy going into this when the wrestlers are, are submitting so many promo videos <laughs> and uh, with some interesting setups, little, little judging by the Wild West one. Uh, I, hey, so first I want to give a shout out. Memfo, Memfo Mofo. Uh, this isn't one of the higher end ones that he does, but he does the Mofo Show videos, and uh, and I know he says that well, they're a lot of work. I'm like, man, they're good though, and and he's been getting out there and doing some stuff. Um, he's one of those guys that's got a, a bit of charisma. Um, he's always a lot of fun when he comes out. I don't know how much you'll find online for him, but check out Mempho. Mempho Mofo, as in Memphis, I believe. Mempho, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Mark Mark Bravara. Uh, I, I think he's going to be just one of those charismatic guys that, that, that you're going to want to watch and see how he grows over time. Uh, but, but the main event, of course, rematch of sorts. Amazing Red, Sanjay Dutt. For the Cruiserweight title, throwing in the mix, friend of the show. You should be watching him on the indies. Uh, we actually have a lot of sales over on IndieWrestling.us. We're kind of featuring Jason Gorey this month uh, because he's kind of the Halloween thing we have in indie wrestling around here, uh, and it kind of fits for that. Uh, so go go check that stuff out. We have a few bundles for IWC, uh, for RWA, uh, and some other stuff coming up here throughout the month of October. Uh, but he's going to be joining the three-way. So Jason Gorey, Sanjay Dutt, Amazing Red. Uh, it's, it, it, you know, Great, great match as we talked about last week, um, and I think this is going to be another uh, match of the year candidate right here. Uh, that 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 best of 2015 DVD is going to be really easy to pick out. Uh, aside from that, we're going to have a, a baseball uh, bat match between Ryan Reigns and Ashton Amherst again. Some local guys here, um, but uh, some really good guys in area, really talented guys in area. Um, I'm glad to see Ryan Reigns coming back because he's, he's somebody that uh, I've been watching for years and been growing a lot, uh, and 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 really I think is going to be uh, another dude that could be doing something cool in, in, in wrestling here in, in, in the future uh, so check that out of course if you're not in the area as I know a lot of you are not uh, check out that and the other DVDs over at IndieWrestling.us and SmartMark Video Renegade Wrestling Alliance um, some great great stuff some good shows um, over the past year especially I would say if anything go back to August of 2014 uh, that was kind of the kickoff of just the really really good stuff with RWA uh, with Matt Hardy uh, taking on the local Ryan Mitchell and uh, going from there they've had guys like BJ Whitmer Sanjay Dutt has been a, a, a staple with them since I think last November more or less uh, Shane Shane Helms who now is a talent agent that randomly appeared on the TNA pay-per-view uh, recently right Eamon uh, so again a, a lot of good stuff rwalive.com keep an eye out for them um, they're developing a lot of really cool stuff and they're really fun to work with um on our site on production and everything too so amen what's going on around the, around the indies <laughs> oh is that where i lost him there's a lot going around the indies <laughs> hello there's also some connection issues so i apologize um And he's going again. He's going again. Eamon, I don't know what's going on with your connection, so I'm just going to kind of run with this, and you can comment as your connection allows you to. Uh, so again, Matt Carlin's really good about kind of pulling stuff together and seeing what we miss here uh, in the indies. Again, as I was saying on the other show, uh, this is the column that you get to read, and you get to be the wrestling hipster and say, oh yeah, I know what happened in Shine last week. I know what happened in Cleveland at AIW. Uh, so this is the, these are all the things worth paying attention to. And it's multiple medias. There's pictures and all kinds of stuff. 
up. Shine, a lot of fun stuff happened in Shine over the weekend. Shine 30 event was uh, uh, Friday night in uh, Florida. And on iPay-Per-View, uh, Allison K defeated Soraya Knight in a Bloody Anything Goes match. And there's some insane pictures going on on the blog uh, uh, from from the, their Twitter, of course. Uh, so go check out all those pictures. Allison K, I think, is one that I saw up here with uh, Vicious Outcast Wrestling, actually. Uh, so a very talented one, and a lot of interesting, uh, <laughs> a lot of interesting and bloody imagery uh, going on from the Twitters. If you're checking it out, and again, if you're audio, just go to indiewrestling.com or us slash blog, and you can check it out too. Um, but uh, and, and some some Halloween uh, ness from Alternate Lager. Uh, we had some fun from Destiny World Wrestling. This is what I this is the first time I've heard of Destiny World Wrestling. And then all of a sudden uh, we have uh, Rey Mysterio is their new champion. Uh, he had a three way match against uh, PJ uh, was it PJ Black the 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 former. Um, uh, Justin Gabriel and Ricochet in a match, and there's some insane stuff. Um, uh, gift over on on the site and through uh, through the tweets. Uh, so again, Rey Mysterio is their champion, so he's getting around on the indies. Uh, so it's cool to see him. Also, a part of that, uh, Booker T was a special guest referee on that show. And, and funny, since we we're just talking to one of the guys in his promotion uh, down there in Texas here on, on the interview before this, uh, AIW had some stuff going on their fresh meat event. <laughs> we talked about this poster, I think a couple weeks ago, or I was bugging uh, uh, Jesse, the Mark for it in a chat. I can't remember. Oh, well, um, but some uh, great names uh, popping up there. Ricky Shane page defending the absolute title against Alex Daniels, who I know we've seen here in Pittsburgh, a great bit, uh, really talented guy, uh, really great showing at super Indy and having great matches with uh, Andrew palace. And there goes Eamon with uh, Andrew palace and uh, Dylan Bostic, who are, are both just burning it up here, here in town. Uh, I recommend uh, YouTubing or looking, looking for shows with both those names, all three of those names on there, to be quite honest. And uh, Ricky Shane page, of course, as well. Uh, Gregory Iron uh, defended his AID, AIW intense title against uh, Space Monkey and Johnny Gargano. Oh, no, the Johnny Gargano is another match. But no, uh, Gregory Iron, Space Monkey, another another great fun uh, uh, guy we've seen around the area too. And Johnny Gargano, of course, you've been seeing him a bit on NXT, um, but he's been around. There was just a sale on Top Rope Tuesday. Of, uh, is, I think it's Johnny Gargano week over there. So if you want to go support him and like it and stuff, maybe you were just exposed to him over on NXT. Uh, support him there and, and some bestos on the store as well. Patrick! Somebody's like, oh, Patrick's is Patrick's on this show. And actually, Patrick's, I think, on this show uh, coming to the Johnstown area here in a couple weeks with this promotion. But uh, Maryland Championship Wrestling have a lot of names coming their way. And he just won the Tag Team Championship. So that's what you do after you win tough enough or you don't win tough enough. Uh, you, you, you just go win a belt and move on with your life. So good to see um, him getting out there. I'm <laughs> I'm I'm hoping like you know I really kind of liked him and he did seem like the guy that seemed serious there and really wanted it. Um, I I really hope he's the guy that we actually hear from afterwards a bit more. You know, um, I I, I guess we got one of the girls from the last tough enough before over on Lucha Underground. So, Amen, are you with me? Oh no, Amen's Amen's Amy's not with me. Um, I believe I'm back. He's back ish. He's back ish. Did you have a comment on that last story? Delay. Delay. Maybe not. Maybe not. Okay, we'll roll with it. Uh, sorry, guys. Um, uh, other than that, some uh, some stuff, some uh, uh, tweets checking with Cherry Bomb, who's recovering from an injury. Whoops, there we go. And uh, uh, some insane stuff with uh, Extreme uh, Championship Wrestling, uh, where they used Isabella, uh, this girl, uh, with them as, as a weapon. Uh, you can check that video out as well. Um, so there's, does that count as intergender wrestling? I wonder. Uh, and uh, other than that, check out everything else over at uh, IndieWrestling.us. I think I'm completely solo showing it right now, so it's been an interesting experiment. <laughs> um, so, Amen, are you with me? Possibly, maybe on a big delay. I don't know. Okay. Um, so, Eamon, I don't know if you caught any of that stuff. You have anything around the indies? Anything you want to touch on? I'll give the floor to you, so we don't have weird delayness going on. Uh, I'll just say uh, uh, I, I like to think I covered it all, but uh, go check out Matt Carnes' column because it is 
definitely a really good primer to everyone uh, checking out Pro Levin Wrestling. It's a good way to get caught up on everything that happened in the week. So I, I really encourage people to check that out. Did we miss anything? Is there anything we should be talking about? Let us know at Good Times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or on the hotline 412-206-WMS0. We would really appreciate it. Let us know, man. What are we missing? There's so much indie wrestling. Do we need so much indie wrestling talk that we need two shows? Maybe. I. Jeez. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, or maybe we need more correspondence or we need something else going on here. Uh, but let us know uh, what you think of that in good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Subscribe to us on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Spreaker, and, of course, YouTube as well. And uh, big thanks to our guest this week, Kurt Matthews of the Pump Patrol. How, how do they do that in the, uh, on those shows? Is it, do they have like, a, are they pumping it? Are they, what, what do you say? Are they saying boom or something over there? Uh, the, <laughs> they're, they're big, fans of, big fans of yelling boom. Uh, <laughs> the the, the uh, hand signal that Sword was making is very interesting. What? What? Um, well, but, yeah, yeah, you do, but, like, I feel like they're like fist pumping. Like, no, wait, that's, I don't know, man. I don't know how you guys do it in Texas. How do the bro? How do the bros do it in Texas? They like to get pumped. I, I, they, they, they love to get pumped. I don't know all that entails, but I mean, hey. Okay. All right. Uh, so at Amon Two, please the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling and your indie wrestling encyclopedia. He's the one that keeps me up uh, on everything, which is strange considering his roots around the show. Uh, but anyways, uh, he's something of a wrestle fan. Uh, so check out that Inspire Pro Wrestling. Everything uh, I'm doing over at SorgatronMedia.com at Sorgatron on the Twitters. Uh, thank you everybody for joining us and uh, joining us especially even live on Podcast Night, Podcast Day Live at SorgatronMedia.com starting at 6:30 p.m. Eastern Time. Sometimes a little easy earlier and going straight through to midnight. Uh, we have a lot of fun here on Tuesdays and make a lot of stuff and have a lot of great conversations. So I hope you can be a part of it too, or at least, you know, subscribe to all the things. Thank you so much. Support the independent podcast, passing podcasting, support independent pro wrestling. Joe is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at SorgatronMedia. Hi everyone. Do you like video games? Do you like reading about video games? Do you like listening to podcasts about video games? Why don't you check out InsertCoinToBegin.com? New articles going up daily, and you can check out our podcast, Boss Battle, on SorgatronMedia.com. <laughs>